Mansell with Ron Hogan and Jennifer Gilmore. Uh, we are at Community Bookstore in Park Slope, Brooklyn, where Jennifer is about to read from her new novel, The Mothers. And Jennifer, I wanted to talk to you about it a little bit. I know that this is based uh, very much in your own real life experiences, um, you and your partner trying to adopt a, a baby. And I think you might have talked about this before, but I'd love to, to talk about it on the camera here in terms of why you chose to fictionalize this experiment um, rather than write it as a, as a straight up mm -hmm. memoir. This is the question that I keep getting. Um, so yes, it's true. My husband and I were going through a um, very protracted adoption, but everything that happened within that sort of ignited the novelist within me. I'm, I'm could have written it as a memoir, of course, but you know these issues of race and class and what motherhood is in our culture. These were things that I wasn't experiencing on an emotional level, but as an idea, you know, I, I'm inspired by ideas um, to write books. So it felt like the same as the other books that I'd written in regards to um, the process. But yes, it's first person. It's a contemporary narrator, and so often people make the distinction. Oh no, and because I've written a lot of nonfiction about adoption, it often. Right. And I think in your, you know in your previous fiction, there's always been a strong historical component, mm -hmm. but I think there's also been a really strong family component to both of those prior novels, and that seems to me like a, a sort of a link between your prior work and the mothers is that strong sense of family and relationships. Absolutely, thank you for noticing because I really do feel that the notion of family is what fuels this as well. I mean, usually I deal with ha what happens to families over time, and in this particular book. The protagonist is really concerned that if the ge if the generation stops with her, then the family will be will end. So it does have the same preoccupations with family. So, well, family is at the heart of some of the stories that a reader sends to us about the books that she enjoys. Now, the way that the hand cell works is that people send me lists of books that they've loved, and then my guest stars and I try to come up with a book or two that they should read next based on, on their prior enjoyment. And today's That's list... That's an easier list. Yeah. <laughs> this is an easier list here, but the, the, the list that we have, actually, um, comes from Pamela from Glasgow. And there is an interesting curveball to this list because <laughs> Pamela's choices are The Silver Linings Playbook by Matthew Quick, uh, Mark Haddon's A Spot of Bother, uh, The Beautiful and the Damned by F. Scott Fitzgerald, and then... George R. R. Martin's uh, A Song of Fire, a uh, Game of Fire and Ice series. Uh, no, I'm sorry, A Song of Fire and Ice series, Game of Thrones. Um, so, you know, you've got those three sort of like contemporary for their times um, dramas and then the big high fantasy thing. And it's a really hard one to choose from. And I think like one of the solutions that we did was to sort of like take out the George R. R. Martin and just focus on the three. Um, family dramas, and uh, you had a really interesting choice uh, there that I'd love to, uh, it was the A.M. Holmes that I looked at. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I think it's reductive to say these are all family dramas, right. but yes, I mean, I, this book by A.M. Holmes, Maybe We'd Be Forgiven, that was just nominated for the, what is no longer the Orange Prize. Um, and this is about, you know, the Mark Haddon is about sort of a man in middle life, and he's coming to terms with a lot of things. He's in the UK. This is also a, begins with a man in middle life, and he makes all these different kinds of choices. And it's very much about family, and it's at this curdling pace. All you know, one thing happens, and another thing happens. But it's also a very poignant book about you know how we live our lives and the choices we make. So um, I thought that this would be a good choice. Um, the other one that I link more with The Beautiful and the Damned is Joanna Hershon's new book, which we don't even, it hasn't, it's not even out yet. Um, it's called A Dual Inheritance, and um, it's a very elegant book, which I see as The Beautiful and the Damned, but it's about two um, friends who meet when they're in Harvard, at Harvard in Boston. One's Jewish, one's a Boston Brahmin, and it follows them over, I want to say, you know, 30 or 40 years, 40 years, I think, and it's, they go all, it sounds very, you know, plain and simple, but it's a very humane book, and I just adored it. Um, so those are my two family um, pieces, uh, family books. They're very different in pace and tone, but I think they go with the list. And working just with those three books um, that we had mentioned, 
The one that I came up with was our mutual friend Jamie Attenberg's The Middlesteens, which is just a really wonderful story about um, how this one morbidly obese woman's refusal to do anything about her health affects her marriage and her relationships with her children and her grandchildren. And it even extends beyond that to, to other people in their lives. And the way that Jamie gets at these characters' interior lives is just so wonderful. Um, you know, there's a, a late chapter almost near the end where she's dealing with a character who you really haven't seen a lot from. And it's just one of the most powerful bits of writing that I think came out in 2012. Um, I want to say something about this book, which I really loved, and I want to say that the ending is spectacular, um, just in addition to what you're saying. But, you know, I read this early on, and I didn't really see it just as this morbidly obese woman rule. You know, I, I can see why it's about that, but I just saw it, she, her as one aspect of this really complicated Jewish family. Oh, absolutely. It's, it's, no, but it's yeah. become, being talked about, about <laughs> weight and, you know, and all these interesting aspects. But, um, yeah, I agree. I think that's a wonderful book, and I especially adore it. Yeah, it. and I think you're absolutely right to say that this is just one piece of a really wonderfully complex puzzle. It's mm -hmm. maybe the piece that stands out the most for uh, and is easiest to get attention, but there, there are so many wonderful aspects to this book that... Uh, I encourage you to dig into it. Now, the other thing that I did is I actually did sort of circle back to high epic fantasy, uh, because when you think about it, the George R. R. Martin stories are themselves kind of a family melodrama, uh, you know, in that sort of like royal melodrama sense. The stakes just happen to be a little bit higher in terms of you know, sorting out the destinies of kingdoms and such. And there's a brand new novel, the first in a series, um, by a young writer named Evie Manieri. And it's called Blood's Pride, and it really is this wonderful sort of combination of epic fantasy, clashing kingdoms, and but at the core of it, there is this sort of family melodrama that is practically worthy of like, you know, 50s Douglas Sirk or Vincent Minnelli film in terms of how screwed up this family is. And, uh, you know, the dynamics are just so wonderful, and she has a really rich sense of character, and her ability to plunge you into this very alien world, but with characters whose relationships and the ways that uh, their relationships are messed up is all too familiar to us, and it's just a really great path to get in, and I'm looking forward to seeing what she does with the series as it, as it continues. So, can I say something about fantasy? Sure. Because um, I feel that I haven't been able to talk long enough about my books. Okay. Um, this book that I that's coming out next week by Bethany Schneider, it's called The River of No Return. I don't read a ton of fantasy, so I'm probably easily swayed. But this book, I just loved it. It it and it's about, you know, a guy. You know, the, there's a guild and there's a guy who dies in the you know in a war and the Napoleonic Wars and then it's modern England. But it's also very much about patriotism and nationalism and ethnicity. And I just it's really well handled, and I loved it. And I, granted, I don't read a lot of fantasy, but it sort of took my breath away. Yeah. So, Pamela, there are some choices for you to, to choose from. <laughs> choices to choose from. But, yeah, choose mine. Yeah, choose hers. <laughs> or mine. And, uh, you know, I think that'll get you some, some great reading. If you have read any of those books and you love them, you know, let me know. Uh, and for the rest of you, I hope you'll check out those books as well. And if you would like me to make recommendations for you, all you need to do is go to thehandcell.com slash ask and tell me about three, four, five books or authors that you've enjoyed. And then I will recruit an author or maybe an independent bookseller and we will see what recommendations we can come up for you with. Uh, so from Community Bookstore in Park Slope, I'm here with Jennifer Gilmore and I'm Ron Hogan and this has been The Hansel. Thanks.